Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 8. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 8. The Bible says, I will be, I mean, he says he, but I'm making it personal. He says, I will be as a tree planted by waters and that spread it out. So when he says, I am like a tree planted by water, what it means is that I am, see, I'm located by resources. You, you must understand the metaphor. So when he says, I'm like a tree planted by water, what it means is that if I say I want to build right now, I'm going to find land. I'm located by resources. When it comes to me, resources always around me. The reason why is that a lot of men and women here, you're starting a project, starting a company, your company is going through transitions, and it seems as if everything is tough. No, that's not your story. He says, for I am as a tree planted. And when I say it, say it with me, say, I am like a tree planted. By, the, by waters. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm not by chance. I'm planted by waters. Glory to God. I'm not Gopa. I didn't find myself in IT by chance. I planted here. Nobody can root me out. I said nobody can root me out. Because the one that planted me is superior to them. He says for I am as a tree planted by waters. And I spread out my roots by the rivers. That means every condition necessary for my prosperity is making it work. He says, and I will not see when the heat comes. When they talk about high prices, he said, I will be like, what are they talking about? He says, and my leaves shall be green, ever fruitful. Ever fruitful. Somebody said, my business is ever fruitful. Say, my career ever fruitful. Say, my life is ever fruitful. My journey is ever fruitful. Ever fruitful, ever fruitful, ever fruitful, ever fruitful. Somebody say, amen. As I'm thinking, I need funding. I find partners. Ever fruitful. He says, a leaf shall be green and she shall not be careful in the year of drought. There will be no reservation in the year of drought. This is the year of drought. He said, I will not be careful. He said, I will not be careful. Oh, glory to God. I will not be careful in the year of drought. He says, neither shall I cease from yielding fruits. In January, I make profit. In February, I make profit. In March, I make profit. In rainy season, I make profit. In dry season, I make profit. How much time I make profit? See, I, I, I make profit all around. This is what I believe. This is my story. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. And I'm declaring over you that that will be your testimony. That in every season of this year, you'll be heaping blessings. You'll be heating prosperity in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I declare over you? Angels will work for your advancements. Angels will work for your advancements. Praise God. Hallelujah. From this service, there are men and women that angels will tap them. And they say, I'm tapping them for you. God is going to hammer your names in the minds of your helpers like a hammer he's going to slam it into their mind they will hear your names in their dreams they will hear it in their mind they will hear it from their friends it will be all over their minds in the name of jesus christ the funding you are looking for will come to you by free course declare that i receive it glory to god glory to god so one thing I wanted you to really know is this. Look at what God said. This scripture we read is a scripture of total prosperity. God wants you. You must be convinced that even though my background is not great, even though I have business challenges, it's God's will I do well. Don't doubt it. Don't doubt it. You must be totally convinced. I do well. I have the blessing of do well. It's God's will I do well. Praise God. It's God's desire that I do well. Oh, glory to God. Luke chapter 14. Let's slow down. Because if we take off that way, Luke chapter 14. Someone say, I have the blessing of do well. Say, I have the blessing of do well. 
Maybe I, oh wow thank you jesus hallelujah hallelujah so when it comes to finances i always say this there are two sides to finances there are two sides to finances you know two sides to finances there's the there's the natural thing you have to do and there's what the spiritual thing you have to do the major problem is that most people lean on one leg so let me give you an example samura come samura come yeah just walk up to me walk up to me that's so simple give me a hug that's great excellent go back to where the speaker is come to me on one foot come to me on one foot quickly yeah yeah go back and do it three times yeah don't change the legs maintain the same leg what is happening for you? is it difficult is it becoming harder it's becoming harder yeah the reason why is that there are two legs there's this when it comes to your to things of god there are two legs there's the natural leg to finances there's a supernatural leg to finances the thing is that most people lean on one leg so they are the people that they lean on on the supernatural leg come with supernatural leg so this is what they do they are always praying they are always fasting always sowing but look at them they get tired because you are not meant to lean on one leg towards your finances then there are other people use the other leg now that lean on just the natural leg they're always budgeting always doing online courses and they forget that there's an extra that the power of god can come on peter had done everything fished all night he had applied all the techniques from harvard he had done the ones from cambridge but he cut nothing jesus christ say at the at just he says cast your net for that he says sir that thing you said is scientifically incorrect because based on scientific experiment fishes will come out of the night and they will enter the net it's bright day they will go to the lower levels of the water because of the heat so there's no way i can catch fish as, as a professional fisherman that doesn't work and jesus said this is not about science this is about the supernatural and peter was like well you say cast the nets i have five nets but just to let you know that I would try. It took one net and cast it. And the Bible says, and that net began to break. You, you need to learn and you need to say something. And let me say something. Sometimes women are very supernatural leg conscious. Sometimes. And they're not natural leg conscious. And sometimes men are so natural leg conscious. They're not what? Supernatural leg conscious. You need a combination of the two for a healthy work. So see what the Bible says here. So I'm going to give us some practical wisdom on how to manage our finances. Then we're going to close with a mighty impartation that anywhere there is a gap, magabukaya, anywhere there is a gap, the anointing will produce it. Yeah. Whatever is making, thank you, you've been working on something, it's not coming through. Whatever is that gap, the anointing will produce it. Yeah. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Let's read Luke chapter 14 verse 28. It says, which of you intending to build a tower seated not down first and count the cost whether he has sufficient to finish it. So he begins to introduce us the concept of financial planning because this is a financial project. He says, which of you trying to build a tower will not count the cost first? That's financial planning. Verse 29, he says this, he says this, less happily when he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. Verse 30, and they say, the man began to build and was not able to finish it. So what he's saying is that, hey, before you embark on the project, do you have some plans? I'll give you a good example. You know, um, not recently, someone came to me and had a business idea and they told me that it needed about maybe 10 million naira to run the business idea. And I said, that's great. You know, but I said to him, when you get the 10 million and he showed me how we spend it, it will rent an office, it will buy equipment and do all of those things. I said, I said, that's great, but I think there's a problem here. I said, what's the problem? I said, when you get a 10 million naira, will you start making money instantly when you start doing that? He said, no, because... As a matter of fact, he gets the 10 million and rents a place. It's taking maybe about one month to buy all the equipment and furnish it and all of those kind of things. I said, from my experience, I think when you get the 10 million, it will take you three to six months to begin to make money. I said, but as soon as you rent the place, you begin to generate what? 
costs because you are employed like a secretary you begin to pay you, you buy diesel you begin to pay you buy this you begin to pay i said i said the reason i'm saying so is that i think you need 10 million and you need an extra running cost for the first three to six months when you're not making money. He said, that makes sense. But that guy would have gone into business and it would have been stranded because he didn't think thoroughly. The same thing, some of you, when you want to rent houses, you just say, how much is your house rent? At, at 1. What's your budget? 1.5. 1.5 cannot be your budget. Because when you rent the house for 1.5, you'll pay agency, you'll pay what? Caution fee, you'll pay what? Legal fee. Then when you move into the house, the house, no matter how great it is, is going to have its own issues. Then all of a sudden, you are frustrated that, oh God, why is this happening to me? But the reason why you're frustrated is not about the house. It's because you didn't plan. So you should have said, okay, what I want to buy, the real house rent is 1.5, but I have another 1 million that is extra to take care of the remaining bills. So the Bible says that, less, so a lot of us, our financial frustration is because of poor planning. And a lot of people want to do a lot in a short time because of fear. That's the truth. A lot of people want to do a lot in a short time because of what? Fear. So how do you, so how do you plan your finances? How do you plan your finances? That, that's the first thing. Number one, so how do you plan your finances? The first way to plan your finances is this. Uh, you know, it's number one to have a financial goal. You need to have what? A financial goal. It's important to manage our finances. The reason why is that we don't have... Someone says, when I have more, I will manage better. We manage better to have more. What you have, if you cannot manage 500 naira, you cannot manage 1,000. If you cannot manage 20,000, you cannot manage what? 100,000. You manage to grow up. So... Some of us don't have financial issues. What we have is management issues. Some of us don't have demonic attack issues. What we have is what? Financial management issues. Glory to God. Management and financial management is not about making more money. The reason why I said so is that, you know, I wish I could, I could get something. If I, if I get like, a, like, like maybe like a plastic cup right now and pour water in it, and I punch it in several places, no matter how much I pour water in it, it will leak. Some of you, your finances are leaking because you are poor managers of resources. You're just poor managers of resources. So it's not as if you are not blessed, but you are just a poor manager of resources. And you're a poor manager of resources because of bad decisions. What are bad decisions? Number one, impulse buying. Some of you just go out and you didn't plan to buy something, you just bring things home. How do you buy things like that? And you say, where did my money go? Your money went into impulse buying. It's not the devourer. It's the things you don't use that are taking your money from you. Impulse buying. Some of you have more shoes than you can ever ask for. You keep buying shoes, but you've not worn your last shoes. You keep buying clothes, but you've not worn your last clothes. In fact, so I know people that buy shoes that they already have. And they get to them and be like, oh wow, I actually have this. Because, because poor management. And the way to manage your money is this. To plan how you will spend your money ahead of time, not when you have spent it. Most people plan their money when they have spent it. That has no reward. Plan how you will spend your money. So when you finish your money, I say, hey, how did I even spend my money? Why are you, doing, why are you, why are you make, giving yourself pain? If I were you, I would plan my money before I spend. I said, I want to spend this on this. 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 And if you don't plan for your money, people will plan for you. If you don't plan for your money, people will what? Plan for you. Glory to God. I said glory to God. How do you not have a prop financial management system? Do you have a savings? How can you work for three years and don't have a savings? I'm not saying it should be big savings, but you must have something you're putting aside. Proverbs 21 verse 20. This is very powerful. Proverbs 21 verse 20. Proverbs chapter 21 what? Verse 20. See what the Bible says here. Let's read together. I want to go. There's treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of what? The wise. See what it says. A foolish man spends it all. You know what that means? If you spend the whole of your salary, it's not because it's not enough. It's because you're foolish. Your wisdom pipe is blocked. 
everybody that says i have no savings you you don't have a savings not because it's small the bible says that it's because your wisdom pipe is blocked and i know people that their driver and five percent of their salary and before the month is over they will borrow money from their driver their driver has a savings but our god does not have a saving And saving is powerful. Saving helps you take advantage of opportunities. There will come to a time where the land you want to buy, there will be 25% off. There will come to a time where the car, you can get it cheaper. But if you don't have savings, you will not be able to take over opportunities. God gives us savings so that we can take opportunities. And please listen. Don't borrow people your savings. If your friends are indisciplined enough to exhaust their own savings, to spend anyhow, do not borrow people your savings. I don't borrow people money. It's the easiest way to lose friends. I don't borrow people money. It's the easiest way to lose friends. What I do is that if my friend is in trouble, I give you what I can. But I will not borrow you because I love you too much to lose you. So I didn't want to tempt you with my savings. I didn't want to lose you at all. And be careful of manipulative friends. Because manipulative friends are the ones that will hurt you that the one that will borrow from you and make you feel bad as if you are the one doing something wrong. Meanwhile, they are the one, but they know how to play victim. So they're like, oh, because you bought me money, see what you're doing to me. See how you're talking to me. See what you're doing to me. But you said you were going to return this money back. Can't we trust you with 50,000 naira? Can't we just trust you? And when they say so, they now make you feel extremely bad. And they are the ones, it's, it's just emotional blackmail. Be careful of emotional blackmail. So if I had the money, if I was the one that loaned you the money like this, I would, I, I would not treat you this way. But the question is that how come you don't have to loan me because you spend so much? How can I discipline myself to save? I don't go to this. I don't travel. I hold the money together. Now I give it to you. To, I borrow you because I trust you. And now to pay back it's a lot of problems. And you make me feel as if I'm the bad person here. Glory to God. Simple way to manage your money. And this will apply a lot. And this will apply a lot to, you know, I mean, people are watching from outside the country and everywhere. You know, this is a standard formula, but you can vary it. Uh, you know, just think of your life as six cups. Think of your life as six cups. One, two, three four five six and let me say something here if your finance is small your cups should be fewer yeah if your finance is small your cups should be fewer if you're younger most likely your cups will be fewer and let's say that for the sake of a global audience i earn 500 dollars per month how do i manage my money this is what i do i have the first cup what is the first cup? My first cup is called necessity cup. This first cup is, is everything that keeps me going. So this is where my rent comes from. This is where what? This is where my rent comes from. This is where my clothing comes from. This is where my feeding comes from. This is where my what? Transportation comes from. So this cup is the biggest. This cup is 50%. So I have $500. How much goes into this cup? $250. One, two, three, four five so if it goes into this cup so the, you know why it's important to know that so if you are putting more than 250 in this cup you may be overspending so i have a next cup what's my next cup my next cup is my emergency cup what is my emergency cup if my mother fall ill if i lose my job if i have an accident how will i survive how will I survive? If my wife get pregnant, how will I survive? If my wife just gets pregnant tomorrow and say, hey, I'm pregnant. Like, we didn't plan for that, but the baby's here. If your mom comes tomorrow and say that, you know, they say, I need a, I need a sudden surgery. I know you're going to say, come to NLP, but before NLP, mommy, let me go to the hospital. Let me send you some cash first. So, your emergency pause, what do you put there? You put 10% of your money there. What's 10%? That's $50. Then after your emergency cup, you have another cup there. You know, and, and, and some of you, 
the emergency cup is that cup that the landlord says you were paying 40,000 before I'm going by 20% and you only save 40,000. That in that leap, that change, your emergency cup can cover for it. Then the third cup is what? The third cup is what? Is your saving cup. You need to plan for the future. A time will come you will not be able to work. A time will come you retire. You need to put some money aside. 10% in what? Your saving cup. Praise God. Which cup don't you have? Some don't have any cup at all. The only cup they have is spending cup. Praise God. Then another cup you need to have is this. Another cup you need to have is a, is a personal growth and learning cup. The reason why is that if you're going to get better and earn more, maybe you want to do an online course, maybe you want to you know, improve your skill, do a training, you need a cup that will help you earn more by learning more. That's your saving cup. It's a, it's a 10% in your saving cup. Sometimes you want to go for a scholarship next year. It's good to begin to put money aside for that. And apart from that, the next cup is what? The next cup is what the cup a lot of people like. is your fun cup. Another 10% for your fun cup. This is your fun cup is where you buy a ticket and be like, I'm going to Barbados. I'm going to Badagri. I'm going there. I'm going here. I'm going, I'm going to all those places. That's your fun cup. Sometimes you use your fun cup. You show yourself a birthday party. It, you deserve it. It's your fun cup. Then the last cup is what? Your giving cup. And you put some 10% there. The question I want to ask to you is this, and this is a question. The question is that, what are you doing with these cups? The problem is that some people, they don't have all of these cups. All their money is in what? Fun cup. So, all their friends get married every month and they buy Ashwe B for 250000 fun cup. They are always eating on Friday night at Churrasco, at Selma, at Grass, at where again? Jazz. That they are always eating in all of these places and you keep eating, you will soon eat away your destiny. Brothers and sisters, there are some of you at your financial level you need to eat at home. Oh my God. I'm telling you, some of you, if you choose to just eat at home for one year, you'll be financially free from debts. You'll be financially free. And some of you, your savings is being saved with IMAX. Movie station. Every week, you are there watching one movie or the other. Either the movie is boring or not. And once you watch one movie, you don't just watch movie. You will buy ice cream. You will buy donuts. You, you will not even take somebody that you don't even like just to keep you company. And when the girl also gets there, I'm like, yes, I, I want this. And listen, ladies, can I... Ladies, 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 can I be honest? Ladies, can I share openly? When you go out... And the person that takes you out, say, order. Look at him. Look at him. He ordered for water. You ordered appetizer. You ordered main course. Two different kind of meal. You now order desserts. As you're about to go, you're not saying, there are two or three of my friends that we sit together. I want to also order for them. Listen to me, if you have proper training, they will train you to look at eyes and look at ears. You will know you are past your boundary. And you don't want to do that unless you appear hungry. You don't want to, unless you appear hungry. Like, oh, what am I dating? Am I dating? What am I dating? Am I, am I dating a chocolate or person? It's a dating experience. Don't give the wrong impression to someone. Praise God. Hallelujah. And guys, especially African guys, if you take a lady out on a first date, don't ask her to share the bill. Be responsible. Be faithful to our culture. Once you finish eating, don't say, um, my checkbook, don't say this, don't say this. Say, I've got the bill. And take her to a place you can afford. Not that when she's trying to order, you not look at the menu. Don't order that one. Order the other one. Don't order that one. Order the other one. If you know you can't afford it, why did you bring me here? Take her to a place you can afford. And sometimes you need to know that 
Honesty is attractive. Authenticity is very attractive. And you'll be like, you know, I, I would do more in the future, but this is my level right now. And that is so romantic. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. So look at your cup. By the time your house rent is 70% of your income, you are in the wrong house. You are in the wrong house. I'm telling you, your house rent is 70% of your income. You are in the wrong house. For those of you abroad, there may be loan repayments that will take another cup there. You may need to change it and put that cup right there. You're in the wrong house. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles quickly. Let's turn our first Corinthians. I want to step into the supernatural. So one of the things you have to do is to bring that. You were trying to show me that illustration, right? This, this is what happens when you don't manage. This is what happens when you don't manage. This is what happens when you don't manage. Have you punched out the cup for me? You need a big, I need a big, big, big dog. Yeah. This is what happens when you don't manage. I need a lot of holes in that. Yeah, a lot of holes. Big, big holes. Just carry it up for me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. This is what happens when you don't... See, this is what happens when you manage God's blessing. Just give me the cup. Hold this cup for me. This is what happens when you manage God's blessing. Let me show you. Let me, this is what happens when you manage God's blessing. God blesses you. This is what my, when my God's blessing. And guess what? The blessing stays. God blesses you and the blessing stays. Once you don't manage God's blessings, this is what happens to you. Hold this for me. God blesses you. And as he's blessing you, what happened? The blessing is leaking. And it's not as if, many of you are saying, God is not blessing me, but your management is leaking it. So your management is leaking it. And God is blessing because you lack management. It's leaking it. It's leaking it in your business. It's leaking it. It's leaking it. See, this whole thing is going in here and God is blessing some more, but you cannot be full. And the reason why is that your management is leaking it. Your management is what? Is leaking it. Your management is leaking it. This whole thing is into this cup. We cannot see anything because management is leaking it. Just after some time, this cup will be empty. Not because the blessing was not poured there. Because management leaked it. No wonder Jesus Christ, when he multiplied the bread, he said, gather the remnant and let nothing be wasted. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter twenty first Chronicles chapter twenty nine verse twelve. This is very powerful. First Chronicles chapter twenty nine verse twelve. Let, this is very powerful. Are you ready? It says now, and I, I, I want to bring you to the supernatural side of this thing. He says, Both riches and honor comes of you. Oh my God. Magabakayakaba. He says, Both riches and honor come of you. Thou reign over all. In thy hand is power and might. And in thy hand, oh, Rabasha, take home, Alabaratakaya, Limon, Korabasata. There are some scriptures you read, you, the, the anointing warms up in you. He says, And in thy hand, it is to make great. Hey, Makabaya, are you not grateful? It's not in the hand of the governor. Are you not in the grateful? It's not in the hand of your enemy. He's in the hand of my father to make great. Glory to God. That's why greatness is my portion. Hallelujah. That's why greatness is my portion. He said, it is in the hand to make great. Say, I was born to be great. Say, I was born great. And to give strength unto all. He said, it is in thy hand to make great. Look at verse 13. Verse 13. He says, now therefore our God we thank thee oh my God just imagine you praying father I thank you because it is in your hand to make great I'm in real estate it is in your hand to make me great here I'm in tech it is in your hand to make me great I'm in Nigeria it is your hand to make me great glory to God they may change national anthem but it is in your hand to make great he said, now thank our God. We thank and praise that glorious name. Verse 14. Verse 14. Go ahead. He says, but who am I? And see what I'm saying. He said, and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? He said, for all things come of thee and of, the, of thine own have we given thee. What is this king saying? He said, what we have you give us. This supernatural prosperity. The king says, see what it says. He says, 
who am I? Who is my people that we can willingly offer? He said, what we have, you gave us. He's out of the abundance that we have but given to you. See the mindset. If you're going to prosper in God's kingdom, you will think like a steward, not like an owner. Not like an owner. God, see, I'm saying this because I needed to realize that God wants to do something supernatural with you. He will do something that your friends are going to say, what? 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 But I needed to believe for it. You must learn. I taught you all of it that joined late. You need to go back to the beginning of, of the service and watch what we did in the declaration. You must go ahead. Mark chapter 11 verse 23. You speak to your bills. You speak to money. That We command things. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. How did Jesus Christ put money in the fish's mouth? He spoke to the fish. How did Peter catch fish? He spoke to it. In this kingdom, we are a talking kingdom. Praise God. I said we are what? A talking kingdom. Once we call silver, silver comes. Once we call gold comes. Praise is God. You look at your bills, you say, in the name of Jesus, this bill is paid. He said, this bill is paid. This bill is paid. This bill. They say, you need 100 million for the government approval. I declare it paid in the name of Jesus Christ. All the resources I need for the building, I call it forth. Because the Bible says, we have the same spirit of faith. We believe and we speak. Praise God. Say, I call for the resources. It comes by free course. In the name of Jesus. Every outstanding bill is paid. Say every outstanding bill is paid. Every outstanding bill is paid by the anointed. By the, yeah, 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 by the anointed. By the anointed. By the anointed. By the anointed. Every outstanding bill is paid by the anointed. Shout Amen. Praise God. Please sit down. Glory to God. I mean, I, I, I've seen, I've seen provisions upon provisions upon provisions. One of the one of the earliest supernatural portion I saw was when our church started. It was the first year. We were struggling to pay the rent and all of that, and I was declaring my faith and declaring my faith. And I remember I finished Sunday service, and someone said someone was to see me downstairs. It was a small church. I said okay. I went, and the guy was in his car. And I just bent down towards the window. There was an older man with his wife and their kids in the back seat. And he said, I don't attend this church, but I drive past here every time. He said, and for the past one month, every time I drive past, the Spirit of God says, I should write a check and give to the church. And I tell God, but this is not my church. He said, I wanted to support them. Who told him we were trying to pay rent? He says, you will not see wind. You will not see rain. Yet the valley, the valley shall be filled. You know your problem? You are still calculating who will God use. Is it my uncle? Is it Uchena? Is it Chinedu? Is it Victoria? Is it Aki? Is it Aki? God says, I can raise stones from the dust. Glory to God. He says, I can raise stones from the dust. He says, I can raise stones from the dust. He says, I can raise people from stones. Say, help comes from everywhere. Didn't you read Elijah's story? The Bible says, a ravenous, a ravenous bread will come and feed him. You know what is strange about it? A raven doesn't feed himself. Doesn't feed his own children. A raven is so selfish. He doesn't feed his own children. He leaves his own children and begins to feed the prophets. That's supernatural. They say, we have five loaves. Just because that's enough. They say, that five loaves, that's enough. Someone says, Pastor, I'm only making 100,000 per month. God can use it. <laughs> I said, God can use it. He said, I'm only a teller. He said, God can use that one also. Hey, hey, don't come. Oh my God, listen to me. People that complain never obtain. People that complain never obtain. Rather than complaining, infuse the power of God into it. Hallelujah. Stop saying, I don't know why I'm doing this business. I don't know why things are wrong. Say, Father, thank you because your anointing is working. Thank you because your anointing is working. He will begin to tell your business, I command the prophet to rise. They will think you are crazy, but that's what they thought about Jesus Christ. He spoke to the tree. Be like your master. Speak to balance sheets. Hallelujah. I say speak to bills. Hallelujah. Speak to bank account. Tell it to rise. Tell it to be full. Tell it. Tell it. Tell it. It will obey you. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. We're doing a we we had some needs. And uh this guy just called me and said, Pastor, I, I I've I've been feeling I need to give because we have these needs, but we've not told the church. I said, I've been feeling I need to give to the church. I, I said, Okay, what do you have in mind? I said, I don't know. He said, But Pastor, just send me the account. I'm gonna give hundred million to what any project the church is having. 100 million. I asked the guy, how old are you? He said, I'm 28. When God wants to do things, eh? Because I'm thinking as a 20, 20, 28 year old guy that is single, that can give 100 million, what he could have done with the money? Buy a car that will shake Lagos, pack about three or five people, travel to Barbados for like two months. And all that came to his mind was give to a church. The reason why is that when God puts the thought in their mind, they can't resist it. Can I declare? God is putting good thoughts in the mind of powerful people about you. God is putting good thoughts in the mind of people that have resources about you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Good thoughts. Then like joke, I sent it in the account. Then our accountant told me, say, Pastor, um, will something just happen? We just received a hundred million. I said, wow. Just like that. You know the thing? You are the one that thinks what you need is big. To someone else is small. To God is tiny. Think from the area of God. Someone say Hallelujah. 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 Proverbs chapter 11 verse 24. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 24. I hope I can read three scriptures to you and close. Proverbs 11 verse 24. So there's, there's such a thing as supernatural. Now, I've thought about management, but there's such a thing as supernatural. Supernatural. Supernatural is when God begins to walk with you. You know, when you, when you go to the gym and you start carrying weight, when you're new, the instructor will be supporting you because you don't have the strength. That's what supernatural is. That you want to carry some weight, you don't have strength, and God will be helping you. The problem is that you've not believed this can happen to you, but it can. There was a time in my life, one guy came and said, Pastor, I have a lot of money. I want you to keep money for me. He said, Just take this hundred thousand dollars, keep it for me. I'll take it after one year. What he was really saying was that I want to bless you. Because if I take the hundred thousand and put in fixed deposits, just a loan, I will make money. Just buy treasury bills. That's it. I said, why do you want to keep money with me? The favor of God. How does God bless people? And that's what I want to say. How does God bless people? Because someone says, eh, it, it will give me cash. That happens. But number one, God blesses people by giving them goodwill and favor. And the reason why I'm saying so, so this blessing that's come upon you, you can know what happened. He blesses you good with people. How do I know? Look at Israel. Israel was in Egypt. God told the Israelites. He says, you will not leave Egypt empty. He says, I will grant you favor with the Egyptians. Remember they were slaves. Remember they were living. All of a sudden, the, Egypt, the Israelites had boldness because of what God told them. They began to ask their masters. Just imagine your house comes and says, excuse me, madam. Um, I want to borrow some things. Yeah, what do you want to borrow? Your wedding ring. The one that God gave you. Yes, that one. Now see, the, the shoes, the one of $25,000, that one. And they picked the most expensive. And the people could not refuse them. The people could not refuse them. You would take your CV somewhere. And they would say, even though we don't have vacancies, but for your sake, we will create one. That is what it means when God is setting aside protocols for you. Are you here? Don't you hear the kind of unimagining the testimonies in the next level? 
One lady said in America, he said, the HR company said, the interview has closed. He said, but I will open the portal tomorrow at this time just for you to submit. He said, because there's no one we have found like you who will open the portal for you to submit. Praise God. Look at Proverbs chapter 11 verse 20, 24. The Passion Translation. The Passion Translation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See what it says. Because, because the thing is this, I'm trying to let you what God can do, but I need to let your faith be triggered. There is a, there is a blessing, but it works with the Spirit. It's, it works with the grace of generosity. Because everybody wants to say, oh, I want, but God doesn't just want to want to buy shoes and gas. He's for the sake of generosity. See what the Bible says. Proverbs 11, 24. It says, generosity brings what? Prosperity. But withholding from charity brings poverty. This, your Aka gum hand is affecting you. Tight. You will not tight. God will put seed in your heart. You will not respond. So, see verse 25. See verse 25. See verse 25. Verse 25. He says, those who live to bless others will have blessings heaped upon them. And the one who pours out his life to pour out a blessing will be saturated with favor. They, they are offerings you give. Angels are dispatched. Look at, look at Solomon. The Bible says the same night he offered. See, I want to read it from the way I wrote it in my, in my notes. There's something about generosity that triggers spiritual influences of favor and grace. These influences make angels to work for you. Look at Solomon. The night he offered sacrifices. That same night, God showed up and said, what do you want? Look at Cornelius. The angel said to Peter, his, the angel said to Cornelius, he said, your prayers and offerings have risen before me as a memorial. He said, all the prayers you have prayed and all the offerings you have given, he said, look at them right here. There's something. I wish I had time to read the story in the Bible. The, 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 the king of Moab, he went into a warfare. This warfare he went into, there was a prophecy that says Israel will win. But when the warfare became very tough, I, I can give you the scriptural reference, 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 26. When the warfare became very tough, the king of Moab took his firstborn and in the battlefield built an altar and burnt him into ashes. He offered a sacrifice. When he offered the sacrifice, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says, as soon as he burnt that child, he, he offered it to an idol. The Bible says, a great indignation arose against Israel. So much so that they could not win again. It provokes spiritual forces. There is a way you can provoke forces. So God says you should give. I want to ask you, why would he ask you to give? Does he, does he wear clothes? Does he spend dollar and naira? Is it not for your good? The reason why he has to give, number one, because there are things that need to be activated. Number two, is asking to give to demonstrate your faith. It says, uh-huh, should be you have faith? Give. Because you are looking for more money for the, for the contract. Boy, now says, give. How do you give without faith? And the third one, why I ask you to give is this. It wants to use your giving to break the power of greed. Oh, yeah. He wants to use your giving. Because the Bible says, anywhere your treasure hits, your heart will be there also. He wants to use your giving to break the power of greed. You're giving to break the power. And the last reason why we give, we give to change lives. We give to change lives. I wish I can show you some pictures and some pictures and you know, as I'm talking, I'm not going to stop. The other day I was looking through and I saw all these people on wheelchairs, all these from not from Joss that our church has spent 50 million, 70 million, 100 million building houses, you know, feeding people. I don't know them. These are people that don't even have teeth. They are blessing you. And they say, these people that don't know me, that make me happy. People that don't know you will make you happy. And when people bless you like that, those words go into the realm of the spirits. Look at that child. Look at those pictures. Because you can use your money to change lives. 
One guy sent me a mail recently. He's in Europe. He said, I'm in Europe now. I have a PhD because you agreed to send me to university. He said, I was born in a dustbin. He said, but you paid for my fees. All I'm writing to say is to say thank you. That's using your money to change lives. When does people pray for you? How can you not be blessed? How can people like this, when they pray for you, how will you not be blessed? There's no way you will not be blessed. Because the voice of the poor will rise up before your maker. So what do we do? Every time we give, we provoke angelic activity. Every time we give, we break the power of greed. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. Oh, shalabaya. Lege de mescoradia. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. Are you ready to read the Amplified Version? Someone say, I received the grace of generosity. That's it. I, I, I want to go. See, it was something I desired until I caught it. I, I give without thinking. I give without thinking. I give without. It comes to me naturally. I wasn't always like that. But now it comes to me naturally. Amplified version, please. Amplified. The grace. Because the grace of prosperity is tied to the grace of what? Generosity. See what it says. It says, and God is able to make what? All grace. Every favor. And earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances whatever the need be be self-sufficient he says possessing whatever possessing enough to require no aid when others are saying we need instrumental payments we need mortgage we need to raise money you say i have it because i, I require no aid he said support furnished in abundance for every good work. Stand on your feet, let's pray. Pray in tongues, everybody. That's the grace I want. Pray in tongues, everybody. Pray in tongues, everybody. Le bronze 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 kara tomara ska bronze kashka le bronze bronze dile roske broka pa rapa pa ne kurises ko broko palan tormante re bronze para bada hila sante le hesto bronze silo korobo tongle kata in Jesus name we pray brothers and sisters I want to invite you into this grace of generosity I want to invite you by decision. And say, Lord, find me here. And Father, I pray for everyone today that they will step up into the grace of generosity. And Lord, as they do that, I'm praying, move Ayagade, move everyone, their business, their finance, their career into exponential levels in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that you are going to be like the tree planted by the rivers of water your fruits, your, your roots will not be dry you will produce fruits in every season in the name of Jesus Christ listen and with your hands into towards heaven everyone that is praying for particular funding in the name of Jesus let it be released Receive the blessing of preferential treatment. Receive the blessing of goodwill. Receive the blessing of goodwill. Let grace work for you. In the name of Jesus. Every point of contact you are brought. Either it's a check. Either it's a tool. Either it's a complimentary card. From this hour, let grace rest upon it. Everyone that has a point of contact, lift it up. I said in the name of Jesus, let grace rest upon it. I said let grace rest upon it. Let grace rest upon it. What was the one giving begins to walk? When you were not getting attention, get attention there. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Did you receive it? Did you receive it? Put your right hand on yourself and prophesy. 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 All the resource I need has come. Put this on yourself and prophesy. 
goodwill follows me. Lift up your voice and prophesy. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you because it's done. Everyone under the sound of my voice, return with a testimony. Return with a testimony. Let your business explode with profits. Let your finance soar to a new level. Every outstanding bill paid. Receive in the name of Jesus. Everyone in debt, come out of debt. Receive provision that wipes away debt. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you, you can have your sins. Praise God.